Good afternoon, guys and gals. Welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. Live day one of UiPath Forward 6 from the MGM Grand in lovely Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin and I have a power panel with me as you can see. My guests are going to demystify how different starting points on the automation journey can really deliver a unified goal and what customers want, positive business outcomes at scale. Please welcome the panel. To my right, Manas Arora, Director of Intelligent Automation at Capgemini. Gafor Sarang is here, Global Lead Digital Process Excellence and Intelligent Automation at CSL and Leonard Ahrens, Senior Business Technology Consultant at Anico. Guys, it's great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us on this power panel packed with content. Manas, I want to start with you. Yep. Cap's perspective, where should, is there a right place to start? On the business side, on the IT side, chicken and egg, what's going on? Uh, so, I think there's no right answer for that. Uh, every organization works in a different way, has a different structure. Uh, and a different way of operating. So in that particular sense, what we've typically seen is uh, keeping certain principles in mind uh, when any organization is looking to automate. Uh, you know, uh, firstly, you know, let's get to the history of automation. So history of automation, it was pure play point of, you know, uh, proof of concepts, then it sort of evangelized to, uh, you know, a hyperscale automation. Now we are actually living the hyper automation phase where AI, analytics and robotics are coexisting together. So in today's scenario, I think it, it really doesn't matter where it starts. Uh, it really does matter how, how the principles are followed. Uh, a couple of them that I can definitely talk about is standardizing practices across uh, you know, uh, the different life cycles. It has to work like a well-oiled engine. Uh, now, uh, and like, like a complex automation implementation or a software implementation, it has different stages, right? Now, whichever part of an organization, a business unit, or IT, whichever you know, uh, division is trying to do that, I think, A, they need to have the right standard set, right? So the right standard of discovering an automation, the right standard of delivering an automation, testing an automation, and the right standard of actually managing the whole automation set that they've uh, implemented. Uh, and I think the second most important factor today is creating a, a multi-skill center of excellence, because uh, I think gone are the days when automation alone could solve a lot of problems. Uh, in today's day, organizations are looking for AI, analytics, and RPA to come together. Uh, and whenever we sort of also look at processes, there has to be a wider lens to observe the process, to understand the process, and to kind of fit the right technology and the best technology for it. That wider lens is key. And the great thing is we've got two customers here who whether it's chicken or egg, started differently. Go for let's go to you at CSL. Talk a little bit about where from an automation journey perspective, CSL started business side or the IT side? I know it was one of them. Sure, yeah, for us, um, uh, it was on the IT side. So as part of the ERP transformation we had a couple of years ago, uh, we did a few automations to try and you know, see how this works. And I, and I think it was also, you know, try it out in INT first before you really uh, you know, take the technology to the business because uh, there was a lot of hesitation, right, in terms of is automation the right thing, does it work, does it not work, so I think once we kind of got over the initial, I would say starting small but strong, right, so laying the right foundation but starting really small with the pilot and um, making people believe in automation, you know, does work. And I think that was really good for us. So we started with INT and then, or IT and then, um, you know, with my, Counterpart in Cap Gemini, Prashant Dumble, when he uh, came on, we then created a roadmap to say, okay, how do we now move to the business? So uh, that's where our journey started from. Love it. And then, Lenar, it's a piece chicken, your egg. Tell us a little bit about I guess where so. Etika started. Yeah, well, in our case, it was a little different. We had a, um, a small implementation in place that was initiated by business, and it was maintenance heavy, so at some point, IT stepped in and basically took it to the next level by uh, making it accessible in, in a platform sense, so that also other business units could benefit from RPA as a platform in a more generic sense and just a once-off uh, implementation, so to speak. Um, so we actually made it more mature, you could say, but it was a joint effort. So business initiated it and then IT basically helped out taking it to the next level. So Manas, as you said, it doesn't matter where you start. Yeah. Having that strategic vision is key, but it sounds to me like two different perspectives successfully implementing automation, 
yeah. delivering business outcomes, which we'll get to in a minute. Can you give us, Manas, kind of your recommendation for what is that high level strategic vision? What should it be for organizations that are evaluating automation? Because as you said, start fast, start small, start fast. That's, that's correct, absolutely. Uh, it is about starting small and starting the right way. Uh, what one thing that we also need to understand is the way the technologies now are hyperscaling, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of a rapid movement that we've never seen. And it's unlike uh, the older forms of technology which would impact only one area of a particular business. The technologies here now impact the whole organization, have a use case in every single part of the organization, right? Whether it's the front office, the middle office, or the back office of an organization, it has a considerable impact. And not alone that, it is becoming a key driver for organizations to save cost, improve customer experiences, improve employee experiences. So all in all, I think it's, it's extremely important and hence, having the right practices, again, is, is the key focus. Uh, having the right strategy, having the right playbooks, the right templates, having the right ecosystem to exist, the right infrastructure. I think if the starting point is set right, uh, typically the automation journey that we've seen with our customers is fairly smooth. Uh, however, if, if the initial bits are not very well organized, it kind of leads to several challenges which, which have to be. I, I want to ask you a follow-up question, Manas. You, since we've, we've demonstrated, thanks to your customers here, that you can start on the IT side, the business side, they come together, they collaborate, there's a strategic vision. When you're in different customer conversations, do you, are you asked to provide guidance? Where should it start? In certain cases, yes, uh, but most of the organizations, two years back, yes, we would definitely want to ask and understand. Uh, but now I think organizations themselves know how the automation charter is flowing because most of the enterprises now uh, have started adopting automation, so they are setting up a strategy. But yes, we play a role in fine-tuning that strategy uh, in terms of setting, setting the best practices, in terms of augmenting any sort of work that they're trying to do and giving them the right guidance of how to get to the market uh, or, or run this as a large program internally, so we, we provide that to them. So either the business folks are coming to you or the IT folks are coming to you. And then both of them. Yes, both yes, sides coming. Yeah. Gopher, let's go to you. Talk a little bit about the, the progression of automation. You said it started with IT. I'd love to also get your perspectives on how the automation journey has, has it helped facilitate tighter collaboration between IT and the business folks? Talk a little bit about sure. that. Sure, yeah, I mean definitely, uh, you know, collaboration is a key, I would say, one of the key aspects, right? I mean, there are so many uh, lessons learned for us, and I think one of the big things uh, to answer your question is, um, what is the business value you're going after, right? We're not doing any automation for the sake of doing automations. We're doing automations to generate that business value. And I think one of the key things we did is to try and understand what the business problems are, where the pain points are, right? Work with the business, and give set very realistic expectations on what how automation can actually impact uh, solve business problems. So yeah. I think that really you know, kind of helped. Uh, also alignment with stakeholders, you know, uh, like I already mentioned, uh, setting clear expectations, and also you know, ensuring that uh, change management is the key, right, in this case, because uh, you have the INT organization, you have business, you have some other stakeholders, ensuring you communicate before the project, during the project, after the project, so that everyone is on the same page, and once people know their roles and responsibilities, I think it becomes very easy to kind of uh, go ahead and implement the project. So for us, as we progress from doing INT or IT automations to business automations, uh, the business team started seeing the value because we engaged them right up front and you know, kept them in the know-how right from the beginning. The other good thing that we did is we um, ensured we have automation champions in different business areas very early in the program. So what this did is, this kind of gave us an extension of a team. The automation champions went to each of the business areas and spoke about automation. So they are the ones who kind of promoted the automation, brought in the ideas, you know, and almost became an extension of a team. I think that worked really well for us as well. So that strategic direction that you set from the outset of getting the right stakeholders involved, getting the automation advocates involved for the business. Was that advice or recommendations that your partner Cap Jim and I provided? How did you guys know how to do that? And I want to get sure. follow up and learn and understand sure. yours as well. Yeah, I mean there's a lot of learning from you know uh, all our partners, right? UiPath is a partner, Cap Gemini, so definitely we got a lot of good direction. Uh, and to be honest, when we started a couple of uh, years ago, there was trial and error as well. But I think one thing which everyone consistently said was to focus on value creation. This is why we are, right? This is why we exist and this is what we did with the COE. 
right. value right. creation. That's, that's a mic drop moment. Lenore, talk to us a little bit about the automation journey at Eneco, starting on the business side. Give me a perspective of, of what, was it a similar journey to what GoFor shared at CSL? How well, I hear the similarities, um, but I think we, well, having partnered with Capgemini for many years, uh, they did advise a lot on where, which areas we should find use cases. So there's, of course, the traditional finance, HR, customer care. Um, but the actual gathering of use cases and setting it up, uh, that was mostly a joint effort together with Capgemini and Vent, doing workshops, uh, showing the benefits from other customers as well, uh, and basically creating business cases together to get business on board. Uh, so it's, uh, you could call it triangular, but it was, yeah, uh, say IT is the provider or the enabler, and business then has to see the benefits and then come up with the, the use cases to, um, to automate. So it was uh, mostly a joint effort, I would say. Can you share, sticking with you, Leonard, can you share a little bit about some of the positive business outcomes that Eneco has achieved so far on the automation journey where you are today? Well, I can't go into the specifics of any, uh, any numbers, but of course there's the financial benefits. But I personally tend to look at the uh, qualitative benefits, so reducing errors, uh, but mostly employee uh, satisfaction or employee happiness because we automated quite a lot of manual labor, I would call it, so a lot of tedious tasks, repetitive, bulk work, uh, and that basically makes people happy because they, first of all, don't have to do that tedious work anymore, but second of all, they can you know, put their skills to better use in, in different areas. So it makes people happy. Um, and then, of course, the other benefits are reduced errors, uh, increased data quality, so, yeah, also from a compliance perspective, um, there's many benefits that we have uh, reaped. I'm glad you brought up making people happy because the, the productivity outcome and impact can be huge across an organization. Yeah. It can be huge for things like brand reputation, talent retention, talent yeah. attraction. So that's not, you know, you say it's a qualitative outcome, but it's also incredibly impactful to the organization. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, Cooper, definitely. Share with us some of the, out, the business impacts that CSL has achieved so far based on where you are in that automation journey. Sure, I, I think the two things uh, which Lena touched upon as well, right, which you're just mentioning is the employee experience. And you know, in our case, right, with CSL, we have a plasma center, so donor experience, people who come to donate the plasma, right? So we're working, we're doing everything we can from an automation perspective to provide that experience to people, so it's not just about the numbers or saving the hours. But you know, honestly, I look at automation and AI as actually the new frontier, right, which helps to improve productivity, um, efficiency, um, you know, save time to help people focus on the work that really matters to us. So I think for me, that's where the benefit uh, the business sees. It's more the experience than just you know, the saving of the hours. But, but business critical, the experience is absolutely business critical. Absolutely. Manas, I want to ask you a question. In, in the keynote this morning, uh, it was, I, one of the things that I loved is it was packed with dramatic customer stories. I loved how, did you guys get a chance to see it? How they yeah. started yeah. off and boom, a big sound and the pencil light shines on the customer and they're kind of sharing their, their successes with UiPath and its partner ecosystem. But Manas, a lot of the talk this morning was it's AI plus automation, yes. better together. How are you seeing that in the market from Capgemini's perspective? So I think uh, from a Capgemini perspective, it is AI plus automation, plus analytics, plus generative AI. Yeah. Uh, we typically categorize AI in three parts. Uh, one is AI for people, uh, so something that helps people in their daily job, something like a language translation utility, very basic solutions, but then very effective for somebody's job in a daily run. Then we talk about AI for decisions, something that helps an organization take better decisions uh, on, on, on their key, key important metrics, what they're trying to deliver, so uh, insights on data. So AI for decisions, and then there's the AI for automation, right? So uh, automation itself, we, we have to get back to the fundamentals that automation or robotics as we typically call it, uh, mimics the human actions, right? We still need semi-cognitive and cognitive to augment and think like a human in the cognitive sense, right? So uh, I think that is where the effectiveness really comes to the table. Love that. Yeah. Cooper, give us kind of a perspective on what's next for your automation journey? Where does AI fit in sure. if it's not already? Where is hyper-automation on the roadmap? 
thanks for asking that question. This is my most favorite topic <laughs> to talk about. Nice. I mean, we are on a hyper automation journey, right? It's not about RPA, it's not about AI, it's not about automation. It's a combination of all of these technologies, right, that comes together uh, to make these happen. And uh, I think when we started a couple of years ago, we kind of started mastering RPA, which was a very big thing. I think we are in a good place there. We have a good uh, demand and you know, we've created that buzz in the organization yeah. and we're scaling. At the same time, you know, we now started moving from just doing RPAs to uh, intelligent automation, which is the next uh, uh, you know, part in the hyper automation journey. And this is where you do uh, things like process mining, intelligent document processing, you know, chatbots and so on and so forth. But again, you know, this is where AI kind of starts coming in. So when you have automation and then you uh, bring in AI, you are truly on the journey to hyper automation. So this is where we are focusing on this year and with suddenly Gen AI coming out and you know, making that kind of an impact. Obviously the focus is on implementing Gen AI as well. So I would say starting with RPA, going to intelligent automation, bringing in AI in the mix, doing automation plus AI and then taking it all the way to cognitive. This is where the journey is, where we want to get to and I think uh, we are somewhere in between in the vision. And can you comment just briefly before I throw it to, to Leonard about you mentioned change management earlier, and that's a yeah. hard process, yeah. right? For any, any organization, regardless of industry, people get comfortable. And I always like to say, whether it's personal or professional, get comfortably uncomfortable to grow. How did you help facilitate that, that culture of embracing AI for good at CSL, or, or have you yet? Or is that still in process? Yeah, it's, I would say it's still in process for AI. Uh, this was the same process we went through for RPA. Because like I said, you know, there were skepticism in terms of uh, does automation really work, right? The, everything started with the automation. And now the next question uh, in the queue is, does AI really work? Is it more harmful? Is it good for the organization? What are the guidelines? And I think jointly as an organization, we are seeking the answers to the questions with our partners, right? Capgemini, UiPath, and we've heard so much today in the conference, which I now will take back to the organization. So I think we are somewhere in there. But we've learned the hard way in RPA, so I know exactly how you should now put change management in the heart of everything. Without change management, I don't see the program or AI being su successful in any organization. Maybe it needs to be so. at the core. Litter, take us out with, with really what's next for Enico from a, an automation AI perspective. What do you see in the future? Well, we're obviously looking at AI just like everybody else, um, but we're not implementing yet. We're still discovering where, how, and also in what manner, because there's a lot of, I don't know necessarily the word fear, but of course there's a, it has a negative side or a negative annotation to it, so people are afraid of just applying it out of the box. Um, so we're carefully looking at where to implement it, how to implement it, what target groups we're looking for, uh, yeah, where we can implement generative AI. Um, but anywhere between AI and RPA, we're also looking at process mining, communications mining. So it's, it's the whole, basically everything that's within the automation scope um, is currently yeah, undergoing vision and strategy. So yeah, we're definitely looking at the way forward. Um, but we're taking time to do it carefully. That's yeah. important, that's very important from a strategic lens perspective. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE and really sharing that it can be ch the chicken and egg, yes, the answer is yes, or D, all of the above. The successes that you've had working with Capgemini and UiPath on the IT-led side, on the business-led side, what you're doing with automation, where you're going. We're going to have to definitely follow these journeys closely, but congratulations on what you've done. Outstanding work, thank you for joining us. Thank you very thank much. You. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching this power panel on looking at where should automation originate, IT or business? Yes. Stick around, Rebecca Knight joins me and our next guests are here in just a minute. We'll be right back with you.